Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac. We're in a random today. Okay, that's kind of what I was hoping for. We got uh, Isaac again. This is recorded on the same day when I recorded yesterday's Isaac episode, which I would encourage you to watch because there's some interesting stuff that happens there. And you know you can rely on me uh, to tell you whether an episode was good or bad. You know, if an episode's bad, I'm not gonna go into the next episode and be like, you should go backwards and check that one out, because that would be dishonest, and really, I'm only punishing myself, because, you know, there's like, several hundred episodes that I consider pretty good, so, uh, it's not like there's any shortage, but in any case, it was a good episode, there's a lot of fun stuff, a lot of intrigue, uh, but, the other thing I wanted to mention, the reason I had mentioned that I recorded the same day as the last episode, was because my voice is still a little messed up, I apologize if I sound, uh, deeper. <laughs> That's that is what I meant like not philosophically deeper or you know vaguely sexually deeper um, But uh, if my voice sounds deeper some of you sickos seem to be into that though, so you know much appreciated Here's some more for your um, I thought there would be a good joke there something that rhymes with spank bank But isn't as like overtly gross, but you know the joke doesn't always come to me as quickly as uh, Maybe other people come for each other. So what do we have in this pill here? This is actually a big moment because if it sucks I could die on this boss Eh, it's not very good, but it's not a game changer. It's not a health down anyway. It's a slight game changer, I should say. Anyway, um, in our item room, we originally started with Mr. Boom. Obviously, when you have rerolls, Mr. Boom is not necessarily the most glorious item in the uh, Binding of Isaac oeuvre. So instead, we decided to roll with uh, a reroll, which gave us a little gish, which is an awesome item to get for several reasons. One of which is that little gish is already great. The earlier we get it, the better, so that's another reason. And if we end up actually fighting uh, gish, which is completely reasonable, then we will actually get a vanilla boss room item from him, which means that we could stand to get another HP upgrade and still get the value out of uh, having fought gish. Uh, in the form of Little Gish, anyway. Hopefully that sentence makes even a vague semblance of sense. Hey, Small Rock is pretty cool, too. We're gonna leave the Spirit Heart there and maybe pick it up a little bit later, but for now we're gonna do our due diligence and explore the rest of the floor. What am I looking for? Uh, more tiers upgrades, or I shouldn't say more, I guess, but just tiers upgrades in general would be really nice. Rate of Fire upgrades, Odd Mushroom or anything along those lines. You know what? A first floor cube of meat is not the worst thing in the world either, but as our damage has increased, want to compensate for that tiers down and get a, a, a tiers up as well to help us be a little bit safer. But as of right now, it's certainly a much more comfortable start than our last episode where I didn't get... I might have gotten one boss room HP upgrade over the course of the entire thing. I might have gotten zero, though. I can't remember. So we have Guppy's Tail and the Mark, and uh, I'm gonna take the Mark for the extra damage and then reroll Guppy's Tail. Although, it would take something pretty amazing for me to pay one half of my existing HP for it. And the shovel is not that, so maybe I should have just saved my reroll for the item room. But you know, you live and you learn, right? Uh, I still think the, taking the mark was a smart idea. We have the spirit heart back here to buoy our health, and so hopefully I can snag some more HP upgrades, and we may still get another reroll for that item room, so maybe it doesn't matter. Other priorities on this floor, secret room, which is uh, looking like it's quite likely going to be directly below us. Uh, and if not, well, we can play the blood bank and maybe get enough money to get to 15 cents anyway and make good use of the shop on this floor. And we will get another reroll, it appears. Another key is also very nice. Uh, but for now, let's check out this last room and just see if we can get our reroll up. Oh, I had a feeling that might happen. Alright, so item room. It's gonna give us a white feather, so uh, definitely shouldn't have rerolled the shovel. This is gonna be a waste of a key, but at least we'll get one of the items out of the rotation that we don't want to see later. Bad? Uh, that's not a good use of a key, by the way, then that should be obvious, but uh, shit happens sometimes. With two possible locations for the uh, secret room, I'm getting a little scared here. In fact, what I should have done is look for the secret room first, in all likelihood, uh, and then, tr like, I could use a- actually, I only have one bomb, so never mind. I, yeah, I'm talking out of my ass, basically. Uh, I think the boss room is gonna be down here- or sorry, the secret room is gonna be down here, that's my guess. And it is indeed, lucky me. Inside we find just enough money to make the shop uh, guaranteed, at least, if not worthwhile, at least we'll have the capability to buy something, and there will not be a mini-boss there because, obviously, uh, we're on the first two floors. So, whoa, that my voice, I apologize for that. Um, I'm trying to think of how I would handle this. I think it makes good sense for three cents to buy a red heart, uh, and the reason I say that is because we can get at least two cents back and maybe three cents, maybe four cents, or maybe nickels and dimes. Um, but also, we have the chance to snag the blood bag by doing this, which would be amazing for us. But, uh, we didn't. 
So I'm gonna play this once just to try to get a trinket. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna gamble a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna gamble a little bit aggressively because now that we're on the, um, or sorry, now that we have the map, I can find secret rooms regularly, and uh, that means that money should be less of a problem. So I just love to earn some extra good stuff here, including. Oh, I didn't mean to pick up that. Uh, or I didn't mean to. Uh, I don't even remember. I don't even know what I'm talking about to be honest with you right now. I'm still kind of jet lagged. Just let my fingers do the communicating when it comes to Isaac. Uh, it, it'll be fine. I'm trying to earn bombs, basically. Our money situation is going to be fine because we have the map. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, sure, we earned a lot of keys. I think this is a good use of like 8 cents. Plus, we'll be able to do this again. And we'll get some money back. And that's actually a decent amount of money. So I'm going to come back here and gamble a little bit more. Uh, keys, whatever. Red Heart's important so we can maybe snag that HP upgrade. I'm glad we got the keys, don't get me wrong. Um, sure, more keys. Bomb's important so we can go to secret rooms. Uh, but I really would love to snag that chance at, uh, picking up the blood bag. So I can get a little bit of a speed bonus in addition to, uh, some much needed HP now that I've taken the mark. And again, but, you know, bomb's kind of up there as well in terms of value. Unfortunately, we didn't get one there. We do have nine keys, though. That's something that's actually pretty valuable. Kind of wish I picked up Guppy's tail, but we've become Guppy so much recently that it's going to be nice to not have to worry about health as much as I would on a typical run. But maybe that'll come back to bite me in the ass. I don't know. We'll see. Why do I keep gambling? I keep gambling because uh, I have a terrible problem. Addiction is no joke. No, but sincerely, um, I want to earn more money and I want to earn more red hearts because more red hearts equals more chances to possibly uh, get uh, that blood bag. And wow, okay, that was... I'm glad we got money back, but what a terrible time for a golden key to show up just to make me feel worse about myself. Well, we'll take that down to the next floor. If you don't use a golden key on a floor, you should be able to carry it to the next floor. Not that the game necessarily needs anything to make it, I guess, a little bit easier. Not that it's an easy game, of course, but anyway. Down to the next floor. Ignore everything that I say, as you already do. Um, pretty easy start to this game so far. We've got an okay amount of health. Some decent items already in the form of, uh, well, small rock, little gish, the mark, and, uh... Well, I guess the one HP upgrade we picked up was pretty solid as well. Libraries, because we have so many keys, I don't see a reason not to. This will also guarantee us a second fight, or a second cube of meat, uh, because we'll have a Horseman of the Apocalypse. And we might, if we get lucky, be able to knock out the library rotation uh, of items, which would allow us to use this as a double item room if we come across it later in the game. So, uh, I don't want to go to the secret room just yet, just in case it's a re-rollable item. It makes more sense to go back later. Going to the shop right now, uh, seems like it makes sense, though. And we'll see, what, like, we might be able to get seven cents or more in the secret room, or as many cents as we need at that point anyway. We might fight greed, it doesn't really matter what order we do that in, because once we pay to get into the shop, it's, uh, free to get back in. Whereas, oh, this is a, a really bad shop. Uh, once we uh, pay to get into the secret room in the form of uh, using a bomb, we still have to pay another bomb every time we go back in. So, I think it makes more sense to handle it this way. I don't think I can make a bridge here, but I'll try it anyway, ignoring my own earlier advice. I can, so then I am going to open this up, and we'll get another key and a lot of money out of that. And a lot of money out of here, so sure. Um, already, we, we earned like 19 cents on this floor. Uh, and that's gonna make re-rolling the shop a, a pretty high priority of mine, as you might expect. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, which is gonna be very soon. And I hate that I just said we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, because maybe I'll get the ladder next, because the game has a sick sense of humor. Now, we have one more room here, and I'm trying to run the math right now. After this room, we'll get, uh, one, uh, sorry, we'll get one re-roll, and then we'll have an item room left, and a boss room and something else, which means we actually won't get one more reroll. So I'm gonna save rerolls uh, for now, just in case we actually find out that maybe a deal with the devil is there and that would be better for us. Or you know, we're just we'll have all the options on the table, so we might as well uh, you know go for them. Um, and actually, now that there's a mob trap room here, it appears that it actually probably would have been possible for me to sort that out. But let's check it out this way instead. We will open this golden chest. That's a pretty good payout for a golden chest. Like, objectively, really good value. We got one key out of it. I guess it's not really good value. It's really good value compared to what you paid, but it's not really good value to, compared to what you could have gotten. But it's certainly not the worst that you can get from a golden chest either. I'm rambling, but that's A-OK. -okay. So we should be fighting... Ah, you know what, that's the other thing, is our boss room doesn't really matter from an item standpoint, because we know that it's going to be a second cube of meat, which means I don't have to worry about rerolls. 
which kind of makes me feel better about this. But I guess I was more concerned about the deal with the devil to begin with anyway. So sure, wow, another nickel that's amazing. And also not, oh, I saw it coming and I still stood there, but uh, we'll see. And it's a weird one, right? Because the shears are not good uh, for me right now. But, uh, do I want to reroll this or do I want to reroll the shop items? Well, rerolling the item room item is good because it can give you anything and um, I don't have to pay money for it, right? That's, that seems like a pretty easy no-brainer, but actually the shop room item pool has some higher good things that could come out of it, like a compass, for example. And we're slowly running out of remaining shops in the game, so it might not be the worst idea to check that out. Uh, but I think I will, in all likelihood, unless we come across a deal with the devil, which I still might not take because uh, my HP is not great. I'll probably go for a reroll on the item room instead. And we don't get a deal with the devil anyway, so I'm gonna reroll the item room. We certainly don't need to go back and buy keys, so let's just see what we've got in here. A reroll on the shears gives us chocolate fucking milk, huh? Probably should have gone and rerolled uh, the library, I guess, to be honest with you, but I wanted to make sure I would get, or give myself the maximum chance to not end up with a uh, spacebar item. Which, of course, uh, we did! We ended up with a passive, but it's uh, a passive I don't really enjoy very much. I wonder, like, I, I come into the comments now and then and peru peruse what people are talking about when it comes to Isaac. Um, and that's where I learned that actually, I guess it doesn't give you a better chance to get pretty fly if you kill the blue part of Envy last, although it counts as killing Super Envy, so it augments the possible item payout from that. I don't know, man. That's for people smarter than myself to actually fully clarify. But anyway, um, I wonder if, if there's any debate over whether chocolate milk is or actually isn't worth picking up. I know Bisnap doesn't pick it up, but he says it's basically objectively good, but it's also a hassle, so I don't know. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. That stuff's always interesting to me. Again, this, like I was saying in the last video, the metagame of uh, The Binding of Isaac, despite being a single player only game, continues to evolve and that's real fucking cool and also scary because items that seem good at first are not good anymore and I don't like change, it's hard to adapt to. So, Spider Butt gets rerolled into 10 bombs, which is not the worst item, but is also, you know, quite clearly not the best item, so we are gonna blow this up over here and inside... We find more money. Again, it's great, but this shop was worthless for us as well, so... You might want to get a little bit more aggressive about uh, the way that I'm handling shops now that there's only two of them left in the game, uh, because the compass would be a huge boost for us, as would something like the blue candle. Not that we necessarily need damage more than we need uh, some other things in our life right now, but uh, it would still be viable. It would be a good pickup for sure, I think at least. Uh, but we'll fight our boss first and, you know, knock this out and then we'll see what... Uh, else the game has in store for us. One of the easier boss fights, um, probably not gonna use a bomb for it, but could justify it. It's not like that would be a major, like, game-shifting thing to do, um, one way or the other, but, you know, we'd speed it up, make it less likely for me to take damage. And now, man, if we can get a money equals power after this boss fight, that is, like, the only deal with the devil I will take. Uh, and it certainly doesn't look like that's gonna happen here, so... Tons of money. We had 69 cents, but I couldn't resist picking up the other one. So we have 10 bombs and a range upgrade. What would I rather reroll? I'd rather reroll the range upgrade. Uh, haha. Yeah, we'll take the coin purse. I'm gonna get risky here. We know what this is. Two good ones. Hel oh, yes, that's exactly what I was hoping for. Okay, so we got two health ups. Even if we get one health down, this is fine. What's this? Tears up. Okay, that nullifies the other one. And uh, the tears down we got earlier. And range up. So I'm certainly glad I didn't just pick up a range upgrade. You know, that's arguably, maybe inarguably, one of the best uh, possible uh, coin purses that you can actually have. So I'm pretty psyched about that. Uh, we got a tears upgrade, a range upgrade, and two HP upgrades, which is basically everything I've ever wanted out of a coin purse all rolled into one. It's like beating four bosses simultaneously. Not all of them giving out great items, but <laughs> all of them giving you something that's not bad or, you know, mom's, uh, or not mom's coin purse, uh, pageant boy, that's what I was going for. The coin's purse has pills and, you know, the crown has money. Weird. Not really so much, I guess. Now, don't take damage on this room. Easier said than done when you've got a lot of uh, kind of riffraff coming at you on the screen. Really hoping we can get a third level Meat Boy, buff up our damage a little bit. Do want to go to the Curse Room as well, but I am going to focus primarily. Are we going to get one more reroll? We could, so I might as well reroll the item room first. That's what I was going to say. Um, Ten bombs is okay, but it's not good enough. And if we get an active item and we end up not being able to reroll it again, I'm not going to be too sore about it. Forget Me Now is interesting, but it's also not worth giving up the D6. I mean, it's the kind of thing that I, I feel like you could do a mathematical uh, analysis of. Like, 
take the average item quality or the average value that you get out of a floor in Isaac. Uh, and it's not always one floor. Sometimes it's two floors in case you get a forget me now on like an Excel floor or something like that. But anyway, take that average value and, and compare it to the value of the D6 and how much value that gives you over other floors on average. And, you know, it, it's still going to vary on a case by case basis. But there might be a trend that comes out of that that would be interesting to see. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. This is a interesting room that is not very useful to me. So we actually will not get another reroll. So um, forget me. We we basically exactly what I described potentially happening is happening. Now, if I look at this in, uh, we still can't go to the mob trap room. Even if I pick up that half heart, there's a heart in the boss room, but I don't think it's possible to pick it up without accidentally going down to the next floor. So I guess that mob trap room is off the table. Luckily, we did pick up a lot on this floor, even if we gave a lot to get it. Catacombs Part 2 is no joke. We did go to the boss room, we did go to the secret room, we did go to the shop, and we did go to the item room. So, yeah, could I have picked it up without going down? I could have. And then I could have gone to the mob trap room. Hopefully there wasn't something amazing in there, but lesson learned either way. Necropolis, uh, aka kind of nightmare fuel, but we have another library we can kind of scam a little bit. Book of Belial and Book of Shadows, both, you know, fairly decent items in their own right. Um, without Nun's Habit, we can actually use Book of Shadows right now to get uh, quite the payout out of this blood bank. And again, if money equals power shows up, then my damage problems are basically sorted in one fell swoop. Uh, and even if it doesn't, I'm going to play it once and then turn on Book of Shadows. That didn't work out the way I intended. I thought I'd get two plays with invincibility out of it. But anyway, um, mostly looking for the blood bag, obviously. Uh, Book of Shadows has such a long invincibility time, even though it's now exhausted. I'm going to do one more because I... You know, what have we played this like 10 times already? It has to have a pretty decent chance to pay out. Maybe no such luck. All right. Let's try not to die because, again, I hate to be hoisted by my own bedard. We'll put this down and then we'll switch with Book of Belial, which is also good. And, you know, maybe an item that makes me think to some extent about getting rid of the D6. Although, again, like, forget me now, the payout is probably not going to be enough. If we had Nun's Habit, we could almost guarantee uh, at least the payout from... Uh, what would come from uh, the blood bag, or sorry, the blood bank. Whether it was the blood bag or the uh, IV bag would remain to be seen, but sure, so what? whatever. Um, we're already here, why don't we reroll the library quickly, and uh, there's Book of Sin. More red hearts would be nice. Spirit hearts also pretty cool, so I can get more play out of that blood bank. But um, we're gonna continue rerolling that library, because I think we've almost exhausted uh, all of the possibilities out of it. And it's pretty rare to get to 99 cents without actually uh, having picked up like a two of diamonds or obviously the dollar, but uh, I think we're actually gonna make that happen Which is pretty messed up not messed up just rare, uh, which is cool. Uh, I thought maybe I could get him to hit the uh, Rocks and give me another free bomb, but that's probably not that big of a deal And I probably should have changed the order in which I tackled these rooms But that's not a huge deal necessarily either But it would have given me the greatest chance to be able to reroll uh, The shop in addition to the item room in addition to the library which I can already reroll but I'm still kind of prioritizing the library, so it, it's a high risk, high reward thing, so we might never get another library again, or we might get a library on the cathedral and one of the womb levels, and then, you know, we maybe pick up four good items just because we went through the motions. So this is the worst room ever invented when you don't have, like, brimstone or the ability to fly. That's okay, though. We'll make it work. I want to maintain the spirit heart, but that's all right. We'll... Again, we're not going to die on this room. I'm just going to be annoyed on this room, and that's okay, you know? There's, there, there's value in being uncomfortable in life, I find, and, you know, I'm not trying to come across as a religious prophet or anything like that, but I do think that people, uh, you know, it, it, minor uncomfortable things, I think there's value in being bored sometimes. I think there's value in being frustrated. It makes you work hard. Being bored, you learn to amuse yourself, or you learn to do something that excites you a little bit more than that. I'm not specifically speaking about masturbation. You said it, not me. We'll probably take lard here. Um, we're pretty slow now, though. But there you go. We got one huge HP upgrade. Now we can trade that to a deal with the devil for some good stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of some other stuff that, you know, give being hungry sometimes give you, gives you perspective. Now, if you're starving, I'm not saying, oh, you know, you know, starving to death really builds character. What I'm saying is just being a little bit hungry sometimes. Being not uh, comfortable. I, I do think there's value in that in life. I don't know where, how this conversation started, but anyway. Uh, Blue Candle's an interesting one. A very interesting one, in fact. Um, we buy the Red Heart. That's a no-brainer. Do we buy a Blue Candle? Like, it's it's really good, obviously. We're going to buy everything in here. But we could reroll Blue Candle as well. But it's not the number one reroll. The number one reroll is quite obviously uh, 
my best friend. So maybe we'll keep Blue Candle here and then we'll we'll tackle that uh, the decision of whether or not to take it and get rid of the D6 for Blue Candle a little bit later. I mean, if I'm going to go through this whole library stuff, I should probably keep the D6 so that we can continuously go to the libraries. Otherwise, what's the point, right? But Blue Candle's also really good. Especially when I'm slow, then I'm focusing more on... You know, high health and good damage, uh, if I can swing it that way. And oh, how useful it would be on a room like this. But, um, mm, just kill them. Oh, God. Good lord, there's three of them over here. Well, luckily one of them was actually, uh, one of the, the corresponding faces to that heart was actually in there. It's okay, back it up, and then back it around. And you'll be okay. Um, I don't know. We'll see. It's one of those things I, I can't say definitively. We'll see. We'll probably only get one one more reroll on this floor. We've already been to the secret room, correct? Yes, it gave us some money. I would love to get the compass. If I could reroll the blue candle and be 100% positive it would give us the compass, I would do it in a heartbeat. But uh, the bean, pretty bad. I kind of feel like if we only get one more reroll now, maybe I want to use it on the bean and then take blue candle with me because D6 is uh, not being very good for me right now. And we'll already get the value of two item rooms from every library that we get from this point onwards. I don't know. I keep flip-flopping back and forth. We'll see what's in our item room. Maybe we want to reroll our item room as well. This is not the way to go to get to our item room. This is actually quite a surprising dead end, I think. I mean, I know it's a dead end, but uh, I'm surprised by the fact that there was a dead end here. Uh, but I guess we now know by process of elimination the way that the rest of the floor looks. And that's cool, too. So, we're going to come through here. Oh, we will get one more reroll. So, let's try to make that work. Uh, I just accidentally swallowed the wrong way, and now I'm going to sound like Brad Garrett for the rest of the night. But we've come too far to stop the video now. But I will take a second to rehydrate after this room, because my throat's starting to hurt a little bit. But okay, champion is killed. 83 cents and another not-so-necessary key. Teleport is also really bad. For us in this situation, I'm going to take a sip of water, and I'll be back in a second. Alright. Fighting this boss, please be war. Mm, that's Green Bloat, who I seem to be fighting, uh, unfortunately, substantially more often than I would like. Mind you, what I would like is to never fight Green Bloat. Zero Green Bloat fights per year uh, would be basically an ideal number for me. Obviously, that's a little bit unrealistic, a little bit unfair even, you know. Sometimes there's value in being mildly uncomfortable, right? Uh, I'm mildly uncomfortable to be getting uh, uh, my own F rammed up my A here. Not that there's anything wrong with that, as long as it's, it's something that's talked about in advance and there's a clear safe word. It doesn't sound like some non-safe words, then that's A-OK. -okay. Not that that has a story, uh, you know, tied to reality or anything like that. Um... I'm going to stand out of the way here and try not to get hit. It's a novel strategy I've been employing recently uh, to middling and mixed results, but that's okay. Oh my god, green bloat, man. You should just... Oh yeah, there's no way I'm getting out of that uh, hornet's nest. Uh, green bloat, you should be dead and you are. So I actually am going to pick up the speed upgrade without... Like, in earnest, I'm going to pick this up. Uh, I think rerolling teleport is great. We get guardian angel, which is really nice, and I'm going to take blue candle as well because it's the best space bar item in the game and I'm really, you know, I'm make, trying to make people happy but I'm also trying to get a win and uh, I think blue candle will give me a better chance of winning than the D6 would, but this is not a one game yet we only have 6 HP uh, our damage is okay, and blue candle makes it a little bit better, but uh, certainly w there's work to be done uh, and you know what, I should actually get a little funky and play this blood bank way more often, so we are missing out, I mean we're not just objectively improving we got rid of the d6 and that's gonna be a major thing that's gonna make it harder to get good items later in the game um, and we spent money on it but that doesn't matter so much what else we're gonna put ourselves fairly low here in the hopes of getting some extra speed because that is something that is uh, very much on my radar and thankfully panned out and we missed out on getting one of the items from the library but we also got one of the items from the library so that HP upgrade is pretty big the speed upgrade weirdly enough might actually be even bigger we can still get a third level meat boy although honestly with guardian angel maybe now I want to keep my second level meat boy um, but you know it's gonna be hard for me to pass that up given the opportunity I do want some more deals with the devil but that apparently is uh, you know asking for quite a lot Let's blow this up and see what we have in our secret room. Now that we do not have to worry about rerolls, I can just kind of not steamroll because that implies that it's going to be automatically great, but we'll do the best we can. Another HP upgrade. Now that's a tears downgrade and a range upgrade. 
Is that worth re one red heart that is, you know, fairly transient? I think so. Is that golden chest worth a bomb and two keys? Probably not. So, uh, I'm just gonna back away from that one. You know, there's always the chance that it has an HP upgrade in it, and there's always the chance that it has dog shit in it. So, I'm not too concerned. Now, time to remember that I have blue candle, which means actually use it. It's a pretty important item. Again, like... I don't want to say it's objectively the best spacebar item. That is something I would that I would love to have some conversation with with some other high-level Binding of Isaac players. What is the best spacebar item? Uh, the D6 is probably one that would get a huge nod because you can kind of use it and abuse it and then just set it down and forget it, town. That you know it doesn't really work as well when it doesn't rhyme, but you get the idea. Um, you can milk the value out of it and then replace it with something that maybe gives you uh, more short-term benefits rather than long-term. That's pretty cool. But uh, if I could only have D6 or Blue Candle for the whole run, I would take D6. But because you can get rid of D6, uh, I prefer... I'm using a key here, by the way, so I can get into the mob trap room. Uh, because you can get rid of the D6, you can use it and then get rid of it later. I, I think, like... It's an okay decision to get rid of it for Blue Candle. Oh, well, we got our favorite uh, value-considerative mob trap room here. One golden chest, you open for a key, and it gives you two keys. But, you know, there is an opportunity cost lost with the other stuff in the... Um, that could have been in the golden chest, is what I mean to say. Anyway, you should be killed, and this is an easy room. Obviously, our damage is doing quite well right now. Um, the most important thing on this floor, the most important element, I think, is, uh, it would be really nice for once to have, like, a, a passive good item in the shop. Sorry, not, well, yes, also true, but a passive good item in the, uh, item room, and it would be really nice to have the compass in the shop. I'm trying to think of what else. I don't think Book of Revelations can even show up in the shop anymore. Hey, here's a question. What if these guys shoot a silkworm and then I kill them? Does the silkworm die immediately? No, it comes back. I think I already knew that, but I wanted to refresh my memory. Alright, we finally get a trinket just in time to have missed out on us, like, basically having 99 keys if we had used it uh, earlier in the game, because we have 91 cents. And 9 keys, you know, I guess, you know, doing the math it doesn't quite add up, but it could have because we spent some money as well that we picked up. Anyway, I'm, I can't be too sore about it. 9 keys is still above average for a run in all likelihood. Um, this is our corridor of promise here. You know, in Iron Man 2, when, uh, Robert Downey Jr. finds that tape of his dad, and it's like, he's looking at a model of the World's Fair, and he's talking about how great the future could be? That's how I feel before walking into these rooms. Now, little Chad doesn't necessarily inspire that much hope. Uh, neither does greed. So, I guess, this basically, uh, panned out about as well as Iron Man 2 did at the box office. Hi-ho, it was actually probably quite successful. Um, I guess we go to the end here in case there's a library, and there isn't, but, you know, there's an arcade, which could be useful as well, proving again that I'm actually pretty short-sighted at times. Now, just back it up, back it in, let me begin. I can't not take damage on this room, it's a sin, uh, it's, you know, jokes aren't always, they, they don't work out as well outside of my head as they do inside of my head. Now, uh, we're gonna play, I don't really care about the three-headed man, but I do care about either getting... I don't know, a better trinket for the mom fight, or just more spirit hearts, because spirit hearts actually would allow me to have some fun on that blood bank and maybe snag another blood bag. And this is not going very well here, as you can see. Uh, it's a kind of an interesting question, how much am I willing to play this blood bank uh, in order to... Oh yeah, thanks for the golden key just in time. In order to still make myself feel okay on the mom fight, but also give myself a chance to get the blood bag. And about, you know, that much health is pretty much where I want to be, I think. So now we'll gamble on these guys, and you know, I hate to do this because it's kind of annoying, and, oh, is he going to pay out with fly love? I really thought that would just be it right there. Um, I, I really want to get hearts, so I don't know. I'm going to play this. I don't, I don't like this guy anymore. I'm going to blow him up. That's how long my resolve lasted. That's pretty much what I was hoping for. I'm going to play it one more time just in case. All right, fair enough. Then I'm gonna blow it up and take more hearts, hopefully. Cool. That's uh, I think that's acceptable. And we got some extra keys. We're probably not gonna need them now that we have uh, the golden key. We can go up in that golden chest. It'll only cost us a bomb now, which will probably give us adequate value for our time and money. Our time, at least. So let's do that. Then we'll fight mom. Mom should be easy, regardless of what variant is, because of blue candle. Um. Then we go down to the womb, without a compass, but with a map, and, uh, with what I would consider to be a fairly reasonable chance. Alright, sure, yes, more keys! Guppy's tail would have been so good! 
Hopefully we can earn a deal with the devil on the womb. Otherwise, that'll be a concern for me. Because I'm a little bit... I'm not as high on health as I would need to be to feel good about this run's damage, if that makes sense. The higher your damage goes up, the less your health needs to be in order to be okay. Um, in order for you to be okay, I guess I, sh I should say. Um, and we're not quite at, like, crazy health, and we're not quite at crazy damage, even with blue candles, so... Uh, it's not fantastic. At this point, trading a bomb for a key seems pretty weird. I should probably go pick up that red heart, though, because otherwise, what's the point of this? Was that a tinted rock? Okay, good. I thought maybe I'd been missing tinted rocks the whole run, but this is okay. Now, sneak down here. We're gonna fight mom. Easy fight. It's blue mom. Blue mom's the hardest mom, but, you know, with one blue candle, we did uh, a staggering amount of damage, and that's fairly usual. Are people mad that I use the blue candle thing against mom? Is that considered an exploit or is that considered, like, kosher? I don't know. Um, because obviously it's it's probably a glitch or it's not working as intended. Um, but at the same time, you can really easily accidentally do it as opposed to something like brim snapping. Not to say that I'm not doing it intentionally, which I am, but um, I don't know. I guess it does kind of feel like an exploit. And then it feels weird that I do that, but I'm like, oh, I won't brim snap on principle. Except those times that I did it because it was fun and easy. Um, I don't know. I, I worry too much. We would have beaten Mom regardless. But this did make it easier. So we're on the wound part one, and these are these are big moments. It's not early days anymore. I gotta try to make this work. Why did I pick up that money? P-A-R-T-Y, because I gotta. That's all I have to say about that. But Northern Lion, you say, that, that really didn't make any sense. And, oh, that was a waste of a key. In fact, it was a, a quote from Ace Ventura. Not even Ace Ventura When Nature Calls, the rare superior sequel. Um, well, I apologize for that, but, you know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. That's what I've always said. Let's kill these guys and move on. That's not a part of that last quote. That would that would put me on some watch lists, I'm sure. Uh, more red hearts is actually pretty useful right now. Normally, I would be scoffing at them, but because we've had a little bit of a rough time here recently, this is uh, A-OK -okay by me. And again, I don't really expect things to get rough here. Uh, until I invite my dog to give commentary. Now, I don't expect things to get rough here uh, until... Uh, there's got to be another joke in there somewhere. But sincerely, I don't expect things to get rough here um, until we get up to the cathedral. Been, like, not a lot of consumables that have dropped. Not, not like, traditional consumables like hearts and keys, because obviously we've had a, a ton of, uh, of keys in particular uh, relative to the norm. But uh, not many tarot cards. I might as well just get rid of the magician, let's be honest. It's very rarely going to provide us with much value. But um, very few tarot cards and no uh, no playing cards, I think. So a little weird. Not not crazy unusual. We have uh, divined our boss room here. Uh, I'm very tempted now. Even though we've kind of figured this floor out, I'm, I'm tempted to explore the rest of the floor in case there's a library. Because a library would... Um, you know, it kind of vindicate me for spending so much time looking for one earlier. Let's just see where our boss is first. It's Saratoma. So there will not be a third level Meat Boy in my future unless I miraculously kind of get one on the chest. Very unexpected, though. But, uh, Teratoma could provide us with, um, at this point, a damage upgrade. Like, the Pentagram would be crazy good. Max's head. I don't even know if that can drop here. Jesus Juice. I don't know. It'll, we'll see. It could just give us an HP upgrade. That would be mighty fine, too. Mostly just wanted to deal with the devil. Ooh, and we did get one. And there's our HP upgrade, which we'll promptly trade away if there's anything good. And there are, there are two good things. The pact is good, and the ability to fly is good. So, I, you know, that's four HP down the drain. That's an awful lot. But I think those are kind of no-brainer pickups anyway. Ability to fly is really crazy good, because my speed was still a little bit below where I wanted it to, I think. Wanted it to be, I, I, I mean... Uh, and the ability to fly allows me to do things like that. Tammy's head could be fun, but Blue Candle is, is better. Uh, but Tammy's head indeed could be fun. I actually like that. Tammy's head could be fun is one of the weirdest things that I've ever said that could be taken out of context and still be kind of gross and weird. But anyway, um, it, I like that item a lot, but I don't think it's suitable here because we're kind of fighting for our life. If I was already in a very one position, why am I even trying to fight those guys with Blue Candle? If I'm already in a very one position, then maybe I would have taken Blue Candle. Or maybe I would have gotten rid of Blue Candle and taken Tammy's head, but since we're not, I'm not going to do that. And that's okay, I think. Now, 
I'm really hoping that a library is down here, because otherwise it doesn't make sense to spend a bunch of rerolls trying to mess up the library's item pool. I guess it does if you can get, you know, Nun's Habit and get a ton of D6 charges, but for base D6 value, it doesn't really make a lot of sense because it's very unlikely to provide you with more value than the value you lose by spending your rerolls on the library and only getting books back for as long as that takes. Uh, but here we are with no library and me looking a little bit foolish, but at least we'll always have the fact that I did go through that for basically no reason. Feeling a little bit more confident. Uh, two health down from where I started this floor, is that true? Maybe maybe three health down from where I started this floor. But, um, we got the ability to fly, spectral tears, and a uh, pretty sizable attribute bonus. That's pretty cool. Let's head down to the womb part two, and I'm gonna check out the far right side here first. I guess we still, or I still do have incentive to check out all of the rooms just to make sure that there is no library. Uh, or, uh, check out everything except for dead ends, I guess, just to make sure there is no library. Are you serious? Like, I don't want to go through all these rooms if it's just gonna give you things like teleport, which I already picked up, I'm pretty confident, and then put back down. So it should be out of the pool game, and the compass should be here. The skeleton key, or something at least vaguely useful, versus what you've given me instead, which is utter dog shit. Now, I'm not saying dog shit is useless. Maybe you can be like a dog shit farmer or something like that and sell it as, as manure. People would pay for it, man. I'm sure they would, but uh, I'm not one of those people. Dog shit is useless to me. I don't even have a backyard, much less a farm that would require buying commercially viable, you know, quantities of, uh, of dog shit fertilizer. But there you go. There's your business name, too. So let's go through this fruitless clusterfuck and pick up, uh, you know, teleport again. And then we'll come down here and we'll see if maybe our boss room's down here. And if it is, maybe I won't go to every room because... Uh, every morning there's a halo hanging from the corner of etc etc and I don't want that to happen with room I don't know if that's an everything or if that's just a morning thing with Mark McGrath aka Sugar Ray um obviously you know things didn't really work out we did not find the boss room down here and that's still all right we still are strong enough to and, and we'll explore more rooms and we'll we'll see more stuff and it will have a good time don't worry about the fact that we didn't find the boss room yet we're not in dire straits. That'd be really cool, though. I was thinking maybe I could be the drummer. I don't want to be the singer, you know? That's... My, my voice just doesn't work for it, even at the best of times, but especially not now. Um, and I don't want to hog all that glory, but sure, it'd be cool that I could be, like, the bassist or maybe the manager or something like that. I don't know. I'll talk to Mark Knopfler, and we'll figure this out. We're, we're old friends. I mean, not really. Like, everything I just said was a lie. But I did help him write Hey Jude uh, back when he stole the idea from Elvis in the late 40s. Um, that is another, you know, dead end that could have been a library, but was not. This is episode 700 of Isaac. I just realized that, by the way, just now. So, add an incentive not to die, I think. I mean, this is where you want to be at episode 700 of a series. If you watched episode 1 and didn't know that I was sick when you then watched episode 700 and watched nothing in between, you would think that this game fucking broke me, right? Like, you would be watching this video like, oh my god, like, Ryan is, is gonna die soon. The game killed him. That's not true. It's a good game. This game didn't kill me, man. You might think that this game killed me. Or what is it? You might look down on me because you think I'm gonna die, but I look down on you because you've never lived. That's pretty much the what that's what I want on my epitaph. That's what I want carved on my headstone. Um, so if you can make that happen, uh, that would be amazing. But you won't be able to because I'm gonna live forever because I'm gonna make some singularity, so just get ready for that. Oh wait, you won't because you'll not be getting your consciousness fused with technology. That's a joke that's gonna make people think that maybe I am Maybe a little bit of mental illness going on there somewhere, but I promise you that's not my intention. Yes, I know there's hearts. Yes, I know that there is uh, a, a blood bank available on this level. That's pretty obvious, but um, I don't think that I'm going to bother with it. I think I'm just going to keep things kind of on the level. And the mom's hard boss fight, I'm not really concerned with it. This is going to be an easy one. I'm thinking my, my plan of attack is that I am going to save the strength card for the Isaac fight. And I'm going to really play that fight defensively because our rate of fire is pretty high and our damage is not superb. Uh, so I think the right thing to do is play defensively and use Blue Candle to, to block the incoming shots. Use the Strength card to give you a little extra damage and a little extra HP. And uh, apart from that, just kind of try to hold on. So far, the Mom's Heart Boss fight has gone exceptionally well, but that's not a surprise. That was extremely comfortable. And we didn't get an item, but we did snag a, an Eternal Heart, which is huge. 
So this is it's cool by me. A okay by me. Did I even go to the secret room on that floor? If I didn't, that's a huge waste because I could have gotten a one up or an onk or something in there. And it would just be kind of silly of me not to go to that when uh, we had all the time in the world. Lots of red hearts available here. That's nice. The bombs actually may come in handy. We're at the borderline of that being like overkill. 14 bombs is not overkill in all likelihood. The only thing is, if I'm going to lose to Isaac, I'll probably lose before I can drop 14 bombs. But it might make a difference. Especially if I actually end up using like half of them and then living, then I'll be glad to have them. So, Loki should die right there. That was the only time I think I've ever mustered the courage to actually do that dodge in the middle of that Loki attack. Oh, this is like the ideal room. I mean, okay, it's not the ideal room. These are the ideal items to have for this room, though. Uh, flying, high damage blue candle, and uh, spectral. Which allows me to just kind of hang out in the corner and be totally okay. Although, it's still a little risky, and I still take damage fairly frequently here. But I think we're going to come through this uh, smelling pretty clean now. Ah, uh, this is... Uh, actually, this might be the ideal room now, because... Basically the same thing going on, but we end up uh, getting a spirit heart out of it as well, which is uh, an even more substantial payout. Now, the only thing that would make this better is if this room was on the next room as well, and we knew that the boss room was just adjacent to that. That would save us a whole lot of a whole lot of stress over the course of this whole thing. All right, so that's probably not worth it given our state right now. Okay, uh, well, you know, we got half of what I asked for. That's pretty good. That's why I always ask for double what is uh, realistic. You know, it's just a smart negotiation tactic. Um, this should be extremely easy. Like, borderline no-brainer, but I, I've already taken damage, so maybe I uh, have borderline no-brain. We did get a spirit heart out of this, though, which is basically what I wanted, so... The only thing that would have been better is if I had not taken damage. But we'll also get a consumable at the end of this, perhaps. It's two bombs, that's alright! Not even like J. Smith or NLSS style uh, alright with the Australian accent that we both suck at. Moreover, um, or instead, I should say. Just your standard, like, yeah, that's that's pretty okay. So, the way this fight is looking right now, I don't expect to come out of this without taking any damage. But, I do expect to come out of it with a win, and a fairly comfortable win at that. Keep in mind, I am using the strength card, so this is not indicative or representative of how my fight against Blue Baby may or may not go. But we'll see. Uh, it's, it's certainly very comforting that I've taken no damage over the course of the entire thing, but that could change pretty quickly. Blue Candle is one of those few items that really drastically improves your chances uh, specifically on the late game fights and, and throughout the rest of the game, but uh, very specifically on the late game fights as well. We took no damage against uh, Isaac, that's crazy. So, Dead Sea Scrolls, Life Steal, Full Suite of Orbitals will be nice, Poison Bombs will be nice, everything else uh, makes me wish that I'd stuck with the reroll. Let's see what Dead Sea Scrolls gives us. The Tower, yeah that's nice. Oh no, it was Deck of Cards, okay. I thought maybe it had given us Anarchist Cookbook. I should go back to Blue Candle. I don't know why I walked out of this room with uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yep, I also ended up hurting myself, but uh, at least I saved one bomb. That's what I'm gonna tell myself when, when I end up dying by one hit. Super Lust, come on, man. At least give me Poison Touch when you put me through this kind of nightmare. It's not like we're missing out on any charges for Blue Candle. I just probably wouldn't have taken the damage if I brought it in with me. Please tell me we're not fighting greed. I guess I could just walk out, couldn't I? All right, uh, Yum Heart. That's interesting. Blue Candle's better. Yep, we're just gonna walk out. Uh, Blue Candle's better, but Yum Heart could be interesting. If I had uh, D6, maybe not D or not. Well, if I had D6, I'd reroll the shit out of Yum Heart. But if I had Nuns Habit, is what I meant to say, then I would uh, probably give Yum Heart a little bit more respect. But as of right now, it's not uh, particularly valuable to me. This is a tough place to stand on a fight like that, but I was forced into that position. Uh, I don't like fighting the bloat. I don't think uh, that's going to be a secret to anybody. Who does like fighting the bloat, man? It's a nightmare sometimes. But we do have the damage necessary to take him out reasonably well. Three Widows uh, it was the sequel to Two Kings by the Spin Doctors, but didn't really make it that big as, as sequel songs often fall victim to, unfortunately. Alright, you're all dead. That's fantastic. We got some lifesteal there, which I barely saw. Oh my god, my voice. It's a really weird vocal condition where it actually is easier for me to talk like this. But I'll bring it up here um, just because otherwise this is going to become like a real surreal video pretty quickly. Real Surreal also was the band that the uh, the one dude from the Spin Doctors, I think it was Dr. Shoals, made after uh, Three Widows didn't hit it big. I don't even know what I say sometimes. 
Where is the boss room? If I was a boss room, where would I be? I would be on the bottom left. So that's where I'm going to go. And we're going to kill Reed first because he's the most annoying. Uh, I took some damage, obviously, but otherwise, this floor is not going terribly. Uh, I'm going to kill en or Wrath next because... He may be the easiest to deal with, but he's also just going to give us bombs. Whereas we could get hearts or spirit hearts from Gluttony, who is also pretty easy to fight, all things considered. Although he's annoying a little bit when you don't focus him. Alright, so that health probably won't be valuable, but if there were spirit hearts, they would have been. We're going to focus on Famine, and when Famine dies... Oh, he's a little tight, but we made it work. Okay. Uh, when Famine dies, we'll uh, focus on Pestilence, and I'll, you know, breathe some oxygen in through my nose, as long as we're talking about very obvious stuff here. Um, planning on, you know, continuing to metabolize uh, calories and, and sugars into energy over the course of the rest of the day. It's a big part of my daily plan is to not, uh, you know, not stop doing that. Um, you know, when I walk to the bathroom after this video is over, I'm going to put one leg in front of the other. It's the easiest way I've found to walk, as long as we're talking about uh, obvious commentary. Hashtag obvious commentary should be something. Uh, anyway. We're kind of running out of spirit hearts, but I think I'm still, if, if Isaac, or sorry, if Blue Baby is indeed down here, should still be fine. Uh, I don't foresee major problems. Nice that there was not a room there. I told you, man, that we would find him down here. This being said, um, Green Bloat, annoying boss fight. Everyone knows that already. The most annoying of all of the bloats, except for the bloat that kills you, which is oftentimes... Probably most likely green bloat, but anyway, uh, managed to stay out of the range of that and get another spirit heart. Let's just beat the game, shall we? I hope this doesn't end up being like a Matt Hasselbeck moment. We'll receive the ball and we'll get a touchdown and we'll win. Oh no, I'm dead. But episode 700 of Isaac appears to be ending in fairly good fashion. Every time I get hit, I should go drop a bomb up in his grill. And that's good. I think we should stop. We call the mouth a grill, right? I get it. They're, they're, you have teeth, kind of looks like a grill sometimes. Um, rappers can have grills, and that just, you know, extends like the cultural kind of imprintation there. That's probably not really a word. But I think we should start calling, instead of being like, oh, he's all up in your grill. Not that I'm the only person that says that. Me and my mom are the only people that say that. Um, in, in this day and age, anyway. I think we should start calling it a stovepipe. It'd be like, I got all up in a stovepipe. Because, you know, that. I guess it sort of does sound dirty, but a stovepipe is not necessarily a good representation of the foul. So I don't think we're running into issues there. I think it's more like gives you the like an image of in your mental picture of uh, the little rascals like shoving a potato in the dude's tailpipe, and then that actually sounds more like a euphemism. I don't know what I'm talking about. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed episode 700 of The Binding of Isaac. I know I did. I'm gonna go drink tea forever, and that's gonna be fun. If you enjoyed the episode. Make sure to click the like button, it helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more Isaac. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.